Hey y'all, how you doing today? All right. As you can see, back out on in the garage working on the 360 again. Um, previous videos, I got the time gear on. I've got the retainer on. Um, got the keyway in. And uh, today I'm going to put the rest of the timing set on the crank gear and chain, all of that. Um, I may have to pull this timing gear back off, but anyway, I do want to show, uh, some have been asking, um, some people have been asking, uh, why, if I'm going to use this, the LA setup, which this is an LA engine, or am I going to use the Magnum setup? Well, my intentions are to use the Magnum setup, but... I need to make sure that my Magnum crank pulley, which is right over here, I need to make sure that that is going to work with the, uh, make sure this is going to bolt on to and work with the harmonic balancer that goes with this engine. So, um, all right. I'm going to dig out that balancer and... Um, dig it out. I think I see it. So I'm going to dig that sucker out and I'm going to figure out if this is going to work with it. I'm pretty sure it will, but I'm also going to see about the fuel fuel pump cam eccentric that goes on here. It goes on the snout of the crank and then I'm going to see if that makes contact with the inside of the timing cover here. This is a magnum timing cover. So, okay. I'm going to get busy. I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, found the harmonic balancer. Um, for whatever reason, I forgot about this son of a gun. I just didn't even clean it up. So I've got some cleaning solution over there. So I'm going to clean it up. Uh, you can tell 360. Usually the 318s and three, uh, 340s and uh, 273s, they, this is all, uh, will be the same all the way around. Whereas this has got that dish right there. So, and it's got the same blue paint as the crank bolt <laughs> that came off that engine. So, and it's got the same blue paint that's on that engine. So, which that, when that goes back in, will not be blue. So, just as a, but, okay. My thinking was this would bolt on. Okay. But, let's just see. Hmm looking pretty good there tell you what I'm gonna get some bolts and let's see if it'll bolt up be right back okay well these two bolts went right in no issue um, so that's looking pretty good to me right there um, I'm pretty happy with that the one thing about this balancer, though, that I'm a little bit concerned about is the rubber is starting to kind of squish out of it. So I'm going to probably have to get a new balancer. So as you can see, the front side doesn't look too bad here. But the back side, the rubber is really starting to squeeze out of it. And I'm just like, oh. Uh, Oh, man. So, I don't know. I mean, I think what I'll do is I'll be on the, the lookout for one, a good deal on one. I'll go ahead and clean this one up and get it ready to go on the engine. And if I can come across a good one that isn't beat to death and, you know, is for a 360, uh, preferably new, then um, I'll uh, jump all over it. But, all right, right now I'm going to get this one put into the cleaning solution so that let's see unfortunately my cleaner has got full of something else so i'm just going to set that in there like that for right now it'll be working on that snout part that goes into the timing cover so okay um i'm going to 
mock the uh, the fuel pump eccentric on here and put my, put the magnum timing cover on. Okay. All right. Now, in the past, I can recall reading in a lot of Mopar oriented publications like Mopar Muscle and so on and so forth, their thing was you had to run a uh, special kind of washer instead of, instead of the fuel pump eccentric. The reason being, if you didn't run something like this, you won't get the slop out of the cam's back and forth motion. So the cam will be, uh, will have some movement back and forth. And you've got to do that. See, I've covered this before and I've talked about this before in a couple of videos before. But you have this washer right here, this cupped washer, okay? The bolt goes through it like that. And then the bolt goes through the fuel pump eccentric, okay? So the fuel pump eccentric has got some thickness to it, okay? And, of course, it's got that little notch cut into it right there, okay? So, for the uh, keyway, the half moon key. So, I'll bring you all over here and let you see what I'm talking about, see? Got your half moon key right there. The fuel pump eccentric goes right there. You can see it engages with that key. And I touch it and it falls off. So bring this back up here. There we go. Oh my goodness. Just wants to be difficult, doesn't it? But anyway. Okay. Now we have. We have like almost no back and forth play there, which is great. Okay, so we'll just take my ratchet here. Okay. Now, got our fuel pump eccentric on there. And, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mock the time cover up on here. I want to put something on here though. I think I'm going to just put Wayne's tiles on here just to give me some idea you know is this part of the cover going to have a problem with that fuel pump eccentric so that's what i'm going to do and uh, blah, 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 blah. you know what i'm going to smear a little oil in here on this if it shows up on there then i know that they're they're pretty pretty darn close Oh boy, you ever have those days? So, let's see, let's just take a towel. There we go, that's what it should have done to begin with right there. Just kind of tuck it in right there. That's all we need, yeah. All right, we just need to know what is happening here, what's gonna happen. If we've got some, oh yeah, here we go. Got some oil. Mm -hmm. Just smear it around in here. I know this seems very rudimentary, but honestly, this is like a really good way to see if that is going to contact and come, you know, and have a problem with this eccentric. Okay, it's very simple. Now you can use stuff like Play-Doh, uh, modeling clay, all kinds of stuff. But this will tell me without a doubt. Now also too, um, you got to keep in mind that there's going to be a gasket right here. So, okay. All right, as you see. Mm, I'm going to say no contact. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to say no contact. So I'm kind of thinking that that whole, that whole thing was pretty much was just a rumor. However, why take chances, right? I mean, I am building an engine. 
and I have went to the trouble to take a fuel pump eccentric and I cut it down with a die grinder. Well, not a die grinder, a death wheel. Yeah. Angle grinder. So, I got that cut down, cleaned up, and everything like that. I had an extra one. It had a bunch of wear on it. So, I'll put that on here. I think first I'm going to put the cam gear, I'm sorry, crank gear on. I'm going to pull this cam gear off. And, all right, so. All right, so that was a good lesson right there, figuring out if that was going to work. Now, you can use that. You can also use wheel bearing grease on here, too. But the problem with wheel bearing grease is it, it, it might stick up some here off the surface so just something to think about okay but all you're trying to do is just get an idea of the depth here now i mean yes i could have took like you know i could have made a measurement took a measurement off this and this and uh you know measured off of all that with the timing gear and the fuel pump eccentric on the end of the camshaft and yeah i could have done that too but, I mean, come on. That's just an easy way to do it. Okay. My timing set is by Clevite. So. Let's go ahead and slide the crank gear on. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Okay. Now, I will, I've said this before, but I'll go ahead and say it again. It's worth repeating. Do take a few minutes to clean up some of your tools before you use them to put the engine back together. Okay? Because if you've been, <laughs> if you've been using your tool, you know, using like your sockets, wrenches, ratchets, whatever on really really dirty nasty engines it's gonna it's gonna show okay because you're gonna be getting all kinds of little particles of dirt from your engine and something else is too get yourself a good uh rubber and plastic mallet it's really nice for little jobs like that okay Very fortunate, this says on the front here, it says, actually has on the front of it, has front <laughs> on, the, on the gear here. So, right there it says front. So, okay. I'm going to put this on here. Okay, I'm going to have to turn this crank just a little bit, so... Yeah, it's turned back just a little bit where I was taking this bolt out. That is pretty close to straight up and down right there. Okay, I'll let y'all see that real quick. See the dot? Very, very close. I will, like I said in a previous video, I will be trying to do, be trying my hand at degreeing the cam, if I can. I'm not saying I'm going to be fantastic at it, because I might just, I may just completely stink at it. But I'm going to give it a shot. You know what I'm saying? Which I think that's something, you know, that's important.
Oops. Okay. All right. It's been a day or two since I did this, so. Just getting everything lined up here. So, there we go. Really, really close right there. Okay. All right. I'll let y'all see what I got down there. Okay. Dot to dot. Okay. And I'll measure that with a straight edge. I may be out just a little bit. It kind of looks like I am, but I will check it. Got a straight edge right here. looking pretty good tell you what let me focus in on this here a little bit see there's my that dot down there on the crank gear is it's kind of hard to see isn't it so you know I'm centering see I'm centering the this dot to this dot to the center of the sorry to the center of the crank right there okay so that's what I'm doing. I'll tell you what. Let me make it a little easier for you all. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, a little paint marker. Just to make it easier. Just the bright color. Because that, like I said, the dot on that crank gear is kind of small and a little insignificant. So there we got our dots. You can do that if you like, and that will help you out when it comes to seeing this stuff. But see, and as you can see, we are, yeah, it's looking pretty darn good, ain't it? So, um, tell you what, that's. That's some really straight up stuff right there. So there we go. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. All right. Now on to the cam uh, bolt, the bolt and the washer and my modified eccentric. 
So on to that next. Now, some folks will even measure this clearance here. I saw Tony uh, on Uncle Tony's garage. He measured that clearance right there, which I think I'm just going to go ahead and do that since I got this here like this. And, uh, you know, I think it'll be kind of nice, kind of neat. So, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can go watch his video. He talks about degreeing the cam like this. And I thought it was kind of neat to do it like that. He said that uh, Keith Black was the one who, who come up with was uh come up with that so what you do is this your exhaust and intake uh lifters here you measure the clearance underneath them okay and i'm just going to start with 20 thousandths you know i'm not saying that's what they're supposed to be you know yours could be different i'm just measuring to the top I've got them resting against the lifter, top of the lifter bore here, okay? So, all right, so I've got the 20 thousandths, I've got quite a bit of clearance there between both of them. So, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with 30. Okay, 30 is absolutely no way on that one. No way on that one, too. All right. So. So let's go to 25. Okay. Got 25 out right here. So let's see about 25. Will 25 make it? Yeah, 25 will make it, and it's about the same. feels the same on both of them, so, yeah. i tell you what, I don't think I can get any more even on that than that right there. But, but, I am going to get a degree wheel, and I am going to degree all this. So, um, that's what I want to do. I want to use a degree wheel. I think it's just a good skill to learn how to have. I like building these engines. I like building engines, period. Um, I think it would be a good, just a good, good all-around thing to do. Okay, so. All right. So, now I'm getting my modified fuel pump eccentric. Put you all right here so you can see. I'm trying to get you, you know, you all some good camera angles and shots here so that you can see exactly what's happening and what's going on. Okay, so I don't want you all left. Okay, so. All right. Yeah, just like before. Now look at this. See how much slop there is right there? That's why you need a washer like that. Now you can probably take like a regular flat washer and modify it and, and you know, but I was just like, you know what? I think I'd just better off if I just go and take like a fuel pump eccentric and just cut it down. I think I'm just better off like that. Now you got to make sure you, you do engage that. That uh, keyway. Okay, that half moon key in the cam. Yes, very nice. All right, that bolt, I'm going to torque that down real quick. 
I should already have my book open. Shame on me. Okay. 50 foot pounds. That's what that bolt calls for, 50 foot pounds. So that's what I'm gonna do. Take the 50 foot pounds here, my torque wrench. So there we go. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna use that 3 8 socket. Duh, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Let's see. Whoops. Yeah, okay. All right. That's done. But I may have to take this back off if I do the degreeing. So, hey, good practice. You know what I'm saying? All right. Okay, I hope you all learned something about all this. Okay, especially that degreeing with a straight edge. Let me stress something here to you. Every, all of these tools I'm using aren't very expensive. You can get these tools uh, without a whole lot of trouble, okay? I mean like, fit set of feeler gauges. You can still pick them up in parts stores today. Straight edge. Probably get this in like an art supply store. Same goes for like your paint markers. Okay. If you're doing any kind of mechanics work, stuff like this is just nice to have. You're not going to use it every, absolutely every single day. But it's really, really nice to know that stuff is sitting there in the, in the drawer waiting for you to use. Okay. I mean, it's just simple. Simple, simple, simple. Make life. Make this work work for you okay that's the big deal so you know you can and you can work and do a lot of things but um if you're doing this work like i said make it work for you don't be the other way around where you're doing all the work okay uh books you know all of the everything i use uh most all of them are used uh, and they're pretty inexpensive. Five dollars. Now you might say, hey, I can go online and get that. I can go online and, and print all of that off. Yeah, you can. But why do that? And why rely and trust that what you're printing off is actually the correct stuff? When you can go get a book or a manual and you've got it right there in front of you. That to me, that's like... That's that's a no-brainer, you know. I can go get the book, pull it out, pull it open, look up the specs, and then I know, bam, right there, every single time. So that's what I'm talking about, okay? So, all right, I've blabbed long enough, so thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much. Uh, it's overwhelming, the amount of likes and the thumbs ups and the shares and everything like that and i really and i just gave you a big like close-up of me ah. so <laughs> but anyway seriously i uh, really do appreciate you all turning to me for information uh i will try my very best to seriously i will try my very best to get you all the correct information uh you know there's oftentimes you go online you, you you will get pretty good information most of the time, but sometimes it may not. And that's what really stinks. So, you know, you put all that time, money, and labor and work into something, and it's the work is invalid because what you're doing is invalid because the information is not valid. Okay? So, all right. I'm going to shut this off. Thank you very much. And God bless, and have a great one.